I'm Mike Arning, Head of Communication for Haas F1 team, and thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, a couple housekeeping items before we start. Obviously, we'll have our, our folks here on the dais say a few words. We'll then open it up to questions for those physically in attendance. We also have a teleconference component, so many of our F1 media core who aren't here are dialing into that. So we will go back and forth between uh, the media here and those on the teleconference. But I want to go ahead and, and introduce right next to me, Gene Haas, founder and chairman of Haas F1 team. At the far end of the day, is Gunther Steiner, team principal of Haas F1 team. And in the middle, Romain Grosjean. And uh, Gunther, I mean, uh, Gene, you know, very exciting uh, uh, element today. Uh, an important piece of the puzzle to Haas F1 team's debut in 2016. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, you know, this is part of our, our long-term strategy. Uh, I think we've always uh, maintained that we wanted an experienced driver uh, to uh, lead our team into the uh, two, 2016 season. Um, you know, Formula One's a tricky business. It's uh, like any other kind of business. You have to uh, learn it, and the best way to learn it is to learn it from other people. Um, you know, we've, we were looking for an experienced driver and uh, Roman uh, was one of several candidates. Uh, he's, uh, uh, you know, he's been in, in Formula One for uh, you know many years. Uh, he's been, a, you know, an excellent driver uh, for for uh, Team Lotus. Um, I uh, reviewed a lot of his, uh, 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 you know, video of his driving styles. Uh, one thing that was very impressive is the fact that uh, uh, he's scored uh, points uh, almost every season. And that's really what we're, uh, our primary goal here is, is to be able to score points. So I think as a, um, <coughs> you know, a, a piece of the puzzle, uh, he's going to have a lot of work to do. He's going to uh, be our lead driver. Uh, and we're going to depend heavily on him to help us with our, our strategies, uh, car, with the car, uh, with the racetracks, and just the uh, uh, learning of, of the whole uh, operations of an F1 team. And Roma, you've had a very accomplished career in motorsports, winning championships in, in every series you've competed in as you've climbed the ladder to Formula One. What was it about Haas F1 team that made you decide this was the place for you? Well, it's a question I, uh, I had to ask myself, first of all, and you know, thinking about your future and your career is uh, always um, important. And uh, I, um, I discovered the project a few years ago through the media and then get to know a little bit more about what Gene and Gunther were doing and how it was nicely building up. And I like the fact that, it, the fact that it's a different approach to what you know normal new F1 team would do. And uh, I think it's an approach that can be pretty qu quickly successful. And if, you know, if we're racing in Formula One, it's not to be last on the grid. It's to try to always do our best as a team, as a driver. And, uh, and what we like is to try to drink the champagne on the podium. So, uh, you know, I think I, I like the ID with the partnership with Ferrari. I like the way everything has been going. I like the fact that it's going slowly but nicely. And uh, as I said in the media recently, I'm very, very happy that I made that decision. And, and Gunther Steiner, our, our team principal, you know, Gene discussed the overall reasoning for, for pursuing Roma, but can you talk about some of the details that, that, that make him the ideal fit for Haas F1 team in its inaugural season? Keep your finger on it. There you go. I'll keep my finger on. Uh, so, uh, uh, as Gene said before, uh, you know, we looked around a lot to find the right driver because we wanted somebody with experience, uh, but still hungry to do something to go with us this long way. And uh, I mean, I started talks with uh, the management of Romain in Barcelona to see if he's interested. And uh, you know, it's, it's, we spoke with quite a few drivers and in the end, I spoke also with technical people, what they think about Romain, how he develops a car, because we have got a, a, a steep mountain to climb here. We are a new team, uh, all new team members, so we needed somebody who knows what he's doing. And uh, I think in, in the end we found the right guy because uh, he has done it quite a while now and uh, he's still aggressive enough or still wants it enough, but he's not young anymore that he's unexperienced. That, uh, uh, 
we lose time by having accidents or doing uh, rookie mistakes. So I think uh, uh, we just picked the best one out there for, for, for what we are doing. And uh, we focused on him and got him. And we are very happy and we are looking forward to work with him. Excellent. A little bit of background on Roma. 78 Formula One races, 10 podiums. Uh, recently finished third back in August at the Belgian Grand Prix. Uh, his fifth Formula One season currently with Lotus F1 team. We'll go ahead and open it up to questions for those in the audience before turning it over to the teleconference. We do have mic runners on either side of the audience here, so just raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we'll bring a mic to you. Yeah, we'll start right here in the center and down here. Aaron Burns with I'm Aaron Burns with uh, Speed Sport Magazine. This is for Roman. Uh, what would you say is a, a reasonable expectation for a Haas F1 team going into the next season? Yeah, that's uh, that's always a question you get at the beginning of the year. Uh, it's a tough one to to reply when you know your team. It's even more difficult to know when it's going to be the first time the car is on track. But I think from what I've seen so far, we. We should be able to run straight away without having the problem for a new team, which makes, you know, which was part of my reflection for the decision. And we, I think, it would be really good to score a few points early in the season for, you know, newcomer American team, and uh, having a lot of support behind us. David, uh, David Exum, Independent Tribune here in Concord. Uh, Mr. Haas, could you talk about uh, F1, uh, Haas F1 being here in Kannapolis and? What does it mean for Cabarrus County and the Charlotte area? Uh, well, <clears throat> you know, obviously, uh, it's it's been a learning experience. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when we first started here, uh, we built the uh, F1 shop. Uh, actually, we started building it before we even uh, obtained our, our license. And, and looking back on it, that was really a pretty risky move. But uh, uh, you know, we we. Uh, employed a lot of people here in the construction of the facility. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're doing mainly uh, CFD here. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, a handful of pretty high-level engineers. Um, we also, you know, employ people in, in the UK and, and also in uh, Italy. So um, our initial expectations was to, to do everything out of Kannapolis uh, initially. But I think as time goes on, uh, it'll probably be a slow, slower growth uh, as we learn more and more. Uh, hopefully, we'll bring um, you know more uh, employment uh, back here to Kannapolis. Uh, like I say, you know, right now it's pretty uh, high-end engineering jobs, and we're getting a lot of uh, uh, interesting um, CFD engineers from uh, all, you know all over the United States. So it's a exciting time. Okay, Steve. Steve Post with Race Line to Gene. Um, can you compare for us building a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series team as you've done over the last 15, 20 years, and the last couple of years building an F1 team? What are the similarities? What are the differences between building the two type of operations? Oh well, you know, I think the, you know, if anything, the 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 the, the, the main ingredient is just stubbornness, not giving up, and just you know keeping your your uh, head. Pointed forward and, and uh, just taking your licks as you go. Uh, NASCAR was certainly difficult. Uh, you know, we, we we spent five or six years in NASCAR, and uh, you know we were always in the back, and it was a, it was a, a pretty uh, grueling, uh, tough experience. I, I I can sympathize with a lot of the guys that run in the back and just how hard that is. Uh, we were one of the fortunate uh, teams, and um, <coughs> uh, Joe Custard put together a. a a deal with uh, Tony Stewart, and that became Stewart Haas Racing, and and I think in their first season we started winning races. So that was a, a real eye opener. It, it takes the right people to, to make things happen. Um, the same thing with uh, 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 Formula One. When we first started out, uh, you know, initially, you know, we, uh, Gunther took me to to I think Austin, and I met uh, uh, you know Bernie Ecclestone, and you know that was a, a real eye opener there too because here's the you know the Godfather of Formula One, and uh, you know you get to meet him, and and uh, he's pretty pretty coy person. It's kind of like he almost dissuades you from wanting to start this business because he's seen so many people uh, attempt it and failures. So, <clears throat> but like anything else, we uh, kept banging away at it, and, and I think it was uh, a couple years later he finally said, "Look, if you're really serious about this, we'll we'll, we'll get we'll you know we'll make a tender for you," and you know he had to open it up to various teams. But 
<clears throat> we, uh, uh, you know, through the whole process, it, it really comes down to uh, selecting the right people, uh, taking your time, trying to analyze things, then adapting to what you learn. So what we initially started with, say, two years ago, has really kind of changed quite a bit. And, you know, our whole uh, uh, direction now has gone uh, a little bit different than as opposed to what, say, some of the other teams are, where, you know, the other teams are, are looking at, at being a primary constructor, and we're trying to just basically uh, use as much as we can uh, from, you know, our partners. So uh, I think that's the main difference between us and other ones, and that's, I think, really going to be a difference in the way we run our team. All right, any other questions here? Yep. HGM Live from Sports Business Journal. Um, let's do Gene and Duncan. When selecting Roman as a driver, did you guys also look at his commercial appeal to bring sponsors to the team in the future? Um, you know, I, I'd have to say that, uh, you know, we had a lot of pressure to, to, to hire an American driver, but the reality of it was is that a, a you know, rookie driver with a, a rookie team just isn't a good fit. So, you know, our primary purpose here is to, um, to show that as an American uh, manufacturer that uh, we can compete in, in the, uh, uh, the most difficult uh, competitive series in the world of car racing, and that was Formula One. So uh, in order to achieve that goal, uh, our you know, direction was to, to do whatever it takes. I mean, it's like, say, when we first started out, we're not here to, to, to sit there and say, hey, we as Americans can can do it the American way. Our goal here is to is to race competitive teams and basically whatever it takes to get that that uh, car on the grid with the right people is what we're looking for. So I think with Roman, the uh, the difference was is is that he, he there's only 20 drivers that are current right now driving driving Formula One. So uh, he fits that bill perfectly, and um, we were kind of surprised. I'm at least I'm a little surprised that we could have. Uh, uh, got a, a driver with the experience that, that he brings brings to our team because it's going to be a real challenge and he's going to be working a lot harder than he thinks he's going to be. <laughs> All right, I know we have a good bit of folks on the teleconference, so we're going to go to them. Uh, there will be a, 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 a bit of a pause as we get those folks lined up, so please bear with us. Thank you. The floor is now open for questions. If you do have a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad at this time. Questions will be taken in the order they were received. If at any time your question has been answered, you can remove yourself from the queue by pressing one. If you are using a speakerphone, we ask that while posing your question, you pick up your handset to provide favorable sound quality. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad at this time. Please hold while we pull for questions. All right, our first question comes from Dan Netson with Speed Sport News. Please state your question. Hi, this is for Gene Haas. The, the, the last three teams that entered Formula One failed, although one did revive. Where will Haas succeed where they failed? Or how will Haas succeed where they failed? Um, you know, I think our, our strategy is, is, is um, different than what, what those uh, teams faced. I, I think they were under a, a, a real time constraint. Uh, they had probably almost six months to put together a whole team. And I think when people uh, think about entering Formula One, at least from a, you know, my, my point of view at that time, and even you know, a casual observer, is that somehow these uh, cars, uh, you can go down and uh, parts in cars and are all readily available, but you really have to build everything from scratch. Um, I think that's what really tripped up the, the previous teams was is that they just didn't allow enough time to actually build their cars. So when they, they, they got on the grid, they were really, really behind. Um, so not only are you trying to develop and design your car, but you're also trying to race. And to try to do those things simultaneously is, is probably impossible. That's probably the biggest difference with us. Uh, we took a little, we were taking quite a bit more time actually to, to uh, get our car prepared and at the same time we were also able to put together some very important relationships with you know obviously uh, Ferrari and then uh, you know Delara plus 
uh, our UK operation, uh, we were very fortunate to be able to attain a, a race shop that had a lot of facilities that we really needed. If we had to do that in a shorter time frame, I don't think any of that would have happened. So I think that's really the biggest difference was is, is just the more time you have, the more uh, time you have to, to develop the relationships that you need and secure the people, equipment, and uh, other uh, parts of the puzzle that you just, it takes time. And uh, you know, time is, is what we need. And when we get to the grid, uh, we, won't be tr we won't be developing a car. We'll be ready to go. The car is fully developed. And, and I think even later this year, we start to get to work on the 2017 car. So I think we're a little bit af ahead of where those other teams uh, were. We'll stay with the teleconference. All right, our next question comes from Matthew Walter with Bleacher Report. Please state your question. Hi, uh, this is a question for Roman. Um, can you tell us what specifically about Hoff convinced you that this was the town, or is it more of a situation where uh, maybe you thought things weren't going the way you wanted at Lotus and you're just looking for a change? Well, I think, as I say, um, I took my decision before, you know, it was in, there were not a decision A and this decision B. Uh, B. I, I've met Gunther, I've met Jean, we spoke, uh, they explained to me what was the project like, and I, I believe that it's a new approach to Formula One and Formula One, an approach that's gonna work. So, you know, I think I've, I've spent 10 years in Enstone. Um, I know the guys very well and it would have been easy to stay comfortable and stay there, but on the other hand, I, I want to try to win races, uh, win championships, and I thought that coming here to us was a, a good step in a good direction to achieve that. We'll stay with the teleconference. All right, our next question comes from Comes from Team Luke Liegenbrough. Please state your question. Yeah, in fact, it's a question in French for uh, Romain. Romain, c'est une question en, en deux temps. Uh, premièrement, qu'est-ce que vous voulez amener à l'équipe? Et puis deuxièmement, est-ce que votre motivation de passer chez Az uh, s'explique aussi en partie parce que c'est une porte d'entrée chez Ferrari? Alors, apporter à l'équipe de l'expérience et, uh, et tout ce que je peux uh, amener avec moi de, de ce que j'ai fait en, en Formule 1. Euh, ensuite, pour la deuxième partie, je pense qu'il faut déjà qu'on se concentre un petit peu sur euh, les débuts avec l'équipe, essayer de faire en sorte de marquer des points euh, dès le début de la saison. Euh, il y a effectivement un rapprochement avec Ferrari qui est intéressant, mais pour le moment, ce n'est pas, pas la pensée directe. Je suis avec, euh, je suis avec As et j'ai envie de faire des choses bien avec cette équipe américaine. Et je pense qu'il y a encore une autre conférence de télé avant que nous le revenions à ceux qui sont en attendance. All right, and we have a next question from Kay Presto with Hawaii Motorsports. Please state your question. Yes, this one is for Jane Haas. Uh, Jane, besides Formula One experience, what were the additional qualities you were looking for in a race car driver for your team? Well, that's, a, that's a actually a very good question because uh, uh, that was the primary focus was looking for a race car driver. But, uh, um, you know, I think some of the other qualities would be, you know, just the maturity of, of, uh, uh, of experience. You know, there's, there's always theory and then there's actual experience. So I think when you start out uh, as a, a race car driver, um, you know, you, you have a tendency to be a, a bit aggressive. Uh, so hopefully with uh, Roman, uh, you know, his, his – Maturity will, uh, you know, lend itself towards, uh, you know, uh, us being able to, to progress as a team. I think other other areas too is that, you know, he's a, a you know a bright uh, young uh, person. So I, I think he's going to help a lot as far as promoting our uh, you know machine tool brand, uh, you know, in Europe. I mean, obviously he's a, a French uh, Swiss nationality, so. 
Uh, those are both very important uh, uh, countries to our business. So uh, we'd be looking forward uh, to him, uh, you know, representing our products over there. Um, and um, I'm sure that will open up, uh, you know, marketing opportunities, um, you know, both here in the U.S. and Europe. All right, we'll bring it back to those uh, physically here in the room. Uh, again, if you have a question, raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and, and we'll come to you with a mic. Any other questions here? Any remaining on the teleconference? All right, everyone, thank you very much for your time. For those here, we will have breakout session outside. Uh, each respective person here will have their own one-on-one -on -one interview booth. We look forward to seeing you there. Again, thank you very much for your time today. We'll talk to you soon.